Welcome to this episode of YouTube where I've entitled it Prolactin, the Nurturing Hormone. And typically, this time of the year, wolves, whether they're captive or wild, they typically have a hormonal stimulus this time of the year, which is typically motivated by pups. But even in the spayed and neutered exhibit that we have here, in the absence of pups, we typically see a little bit more calming behavior, a little bit more social engagement and bonding than we do see in the fall and the winter time. So we've been noticing though, it's not quite as strong as it has been in previous years. And we uh, conferred with another captive facility here in the Midwest and they said the same thing. It was a little delayed, it seemed, um, to occur. But we're starting to see a little bit more of that. And this is Aiden, who actually was getting some greetings from wolf care staff and Luna attempting to kind of engage him in what uh, appears to be Luna's idea of pair bonding, which is standing over her paired pack mate or sitting on him or basically just disregarding any personal space that he may have. So Aiden is more interested in having the staff continue with the body massage. Luna, again, is kind of in a grooming state there. So Aiden just chooses to get up and leave, but that doesn't keep Luna from engaging. So uh, we uh, do see her to be pretty active. She's actually licking on a spot, uh, a bug bite, that she kind of opened up as a hot spot. So we've been treating that with some uh, ointment and with some powder uh, to try to reduce it. You can see the bugs are swarming around their ears and certainly kind of are problematic. But like I said, Luna is one of those that has a different style of socially engaging. And so she often tries to be a little bit more dominant over Aiden, not really respecting his personal space, uh, stepping on him, that kind of thing. And uh, so we're seeing more and more of that. So uh, the prolactin could be uh, starting to show. Uh, there isn't a real way to measure it without blood work. And so we're uh, just uh, using behavioral assessments to identify it. Now Luna is showing what we call a little bit of obnoxious submission there. Her ears are flat back. She's showing submission. Aiden's not all that confident about this. His ears are uh, off to the side. And again, this is just a little bit of nervous energy that isn't really instilling a lot of social bonding with Aiden. So this kind of goes on, and Aiden, like I said, just, it's hot, the bugs are out. So that behavior, um, some people call obnoxious submission, will usually yield a hard muzzle bite or at least a threat display. And then Luna does her kind of preemptive scream before Aiden really even touches her and then takes off. and turns it into a chase endeavor. So as we look at the enclosure, very thick with vegetation because we've had a lot of rain, the seven-year-olds kind of waited out and watched the three-year-olds kind of run rampant for a while. And then Denali is gonna go join Luna and Bolt in the wrestling. Denali has a tendency to be quite a bit more juvenile in his behavioral traits. So goes back to Bolt's on the right, Luna rolling over and her tail's a little tucked, so she's a little bit anxious about it. And then Denali comes in and uh, does a little bit of scruff biting there. But Luna can hold her own, and Aiden kind of waits by the staff as Luna comes running through. And uh, what Aiden does next is kind of blocks Denali. You see Denali doesn't take off um, for a period of time, and that's because Aiden kind of blocks him. So I don't think he's necessarily protecting Luna. I think what's going on is that it's more likely that he's protecting his status by keeping Denali from gaining too much status by engaging or dominating either Bolt or Luna uh, in too aggressive a way that keeps him from uh, gaining that much more status and be that much more likely to test Aiden. So it's more or less kind of a protective uh, situation. So when it comes right down to it, Luna, like I say, gets uh, uh, the uh, intention of the pack when you run they will chase and so that's kind of the nature of it but the fact that she's got some fairly long guard hairs in her mouth I think that was probably either Aiden or Bolts that she got uh, a grab bite on so this kind of thing like say goes on and it will get better as the prolactin kind of increases typically prolactin starts showing up in April and kind of wanes by August but this year we had an early spring and then we had a cool down in May and June uh, even last night, temperatures were hovering around the high 30s uh, here, so makes it a little bit more challenging. But the heat is coming back, and you can see Denali here a little bit hot and certainly a little bit buggy. Denali hasn't, hasn't finished shedding either, so he's got a, a pretty good winter coat on yet. 
But Bolts has been having the biggest issue with bugs. He's been stung. Last year he was stung. This year, anytime they're buzzing around his head, he's just anxious about it. And so that's kind of Bolts' personality. We've always talked about how he's been a little bit more timid. He was quite a bit older before we started handling him, much older than the critical bonding period where we typically socialize. So he was about a month of age, which for a dog would be nothing. For a wolf that's tend to be neophobic, a month is a real long time. Uh, prior to being exposed to the exhibit. So so basically here now in Grizzer's Pen, uh, every day for enrichment, we try to move the pack into the pack holding area to allow us to do some enrichment activities with the wolves off display. That means that Grizzer's got to cache his stuff uh, before uh, those guys come in. So he's doing a little bit of cache here. Those of you who planted trees in Grizzer's pack holding area might still like to see some green there. We are losing a few. Um, they're not... Um, um, Grizzard's taken out a couple, but uh, we still have a little bit of green um, left, and we these are hardy red pine. They should be able to handle, um, you know, Grizzer in this um, upcoming season. So, um, so again, I wanted to give people an update on Grizzard's situation. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we we had some lab results that showed some uh, issues with uh, liver enzymes, uh, blood clotting issues, and he's 11. There's no doubt. Uh, we know that he's aging. Um, once he loses all this hair you know, body mass, muscle mass is kind of declining at, at 11. You kind of expect that. We are happy to report that we did get uh, another couple of pounds gain on him in this last week. Uh, we switched him from the feast and famine gorging that they like to do, meaning they get a big piece of meat and they like to gorge on it and then go several days without eating. We switched him to a daily meal, similar to what we did with Shadow Malik, um, giving him at least three pounds of meat, um, trying to get a little more amino acids into him to work on a diet with him that helps build some of that body mass uh, back. We'll never gain all the muscle at, at 11, but hopefully we'll make some, some headway here. We did have a better blood draw last Friday. His liver enzymes actually increased, and, and we think that may be in response to the milk thistle supplements that we've been giving him, as well as increasing his vitamin B complex. Um, certainly with wolves, you know, there's a lot of different things that can influence an animal at this age so we're monitoring everything and we're really watching him closely and uh, certainly we know that um, Grizzer is a special animal to us um, um, his life has had a lot of turmoil and uh, a lot of circumstances that brought him to where he is today and and certainly the staff are taking extra efforts to make sure that we physically know how he's doing on a daily basis multiple times a day checking on him greeting him interacting with them. We're giving them the noontime feeding rather than the morning feeding so that we don't distract from our handling. If we fed him in the morning, then he would just eat and not interact with us. So we're interacting with him in the morning, uh, feeding him in the noontime. He gets supplemental uh, milk uh, thistle in the afternoon. So we, there's always some kind of activity going on with Grizzard. So I'd like to thank everyone who supported us in our Wolf Care Capital fundraiser for the Source River Canoe. We pull the tickets, uh, the winning ticket on Saturday at noon, uh, the Wolf Enrichment Program. And uh, if you haven't bought a ticket yet, we have about 10 left to sell before Saturday. So if you're in Ely and you want to buy a ticket, come on up to the den store from 9 to 6. We're open. If you're not in Ely, send me an email. We can figure out how to get a check up here to uh, buy you a ticket. And we are, again, uh, also working on the CrowdRise campaign. And I know it's kind of a lot going on in a short period of time. And it's usually these every four years when we have the pups that we have these needs. But again, I just want to reiterate, it's not only for the pups. We know pups are uh, a big draw and certainly pups are uh, the future of our pack. But we also know that these expansions and these improvements that we're doing will help us as Grizzer retires and we look back to Lakota, the days when Lakota was allowed to come in and out of the lab, we did not have a safe way for her to come in and out of the lab. That means she was going by the puppy, the temporary puppy kennel. She was going by electrical boxes. She was going by things that, you know, obviously made us nervous um, to have her kind of running around. And so this building is not only going to help us with our pups, but it's going to give Grizzer a safe way to come in and out of the lab as he advances in his golden years. So that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching.